Well, good morning, Rovers. It's a day at the boat shed. So why am I standing here on my homestead with the chicken house behind me? Well, it's because every morning starts out like this. First thing I do is I have to let the rooster and the hens out, and then check their food and water, collect the eggs, and then have breakfast. Then and only then can I hop in the car and head over to the boat shed. Anyway, a lot to do today, time to crack on. Well, in the previous video, I mentioned that Wave Rover hull number one must be small enough and simple enough to be built in your average residential garage. So I'm here in my shop. It's 24 feet wide and 32 feet long. This is plenty big to build a Wave Rover hull number one. Now, the door is a standard garage door, and that is seven feet wide, uh, sorry, seven feet tall and nine feet wide. And that is plenty large enough to get the boat out because the boat will only be a little over five feet tall without the uh, keels attached, and it'll only be about eight feet wide. So you can actually build one of these right here, and this was my intention, to build it right in this very shop. However, something else that you should know is, I live right in this room right here with my wife. So Mrs. Rover, being a great sport, is living in this 12 foot by 12 foot room with me. Now we had planned on building a house this summer, but the price and availability of material was out of our reach. So that freed up this winter to build hull number one. However, the negotiation says that I must build a house next spring slash summer before I can go sailing. Well, Rovers, I am standing in the middle of this giant boat shed, and this is where Wave Rover hull number one will be built. Now you don't need a shed anywhere near this size to build a Wave Rover hull, but let me explain why I'm here. Now the reason I'll be building in this massive shed is little more than happenstance. You see, Brian, the owner, who's also a friend and a fellow carpenter, has promised to help me build my house next summer in exchange for me helping to build the pole barn this summer. Now he plans on using this structure to build a Bruce Roberts 38 foot composite wood version of a spray. And yes, as a good friend, I did try to talk him out of it, but he wouldn't be told. As a result, we should be able to assist each other as we progress on our individual projects. Now I'll stick a link to Brian's project in the video description. Warning, if you are not interested in seeing how a pole barn is built, skip to the next section. Well, a pole barn is one of the oldest, simplest, and probably cheapest buildings you can build. It's essentially just a series of poles stuck into the ground, approximately 1.2 meters or four feet, the poles are spaced eight feet apart, which is about 2.4 meters, and they just continue right around the perimeter. You make some exceptions at the doors and other openings, but it's as simple as that. Then it's all strapped in two by fours, and then you put trusses on top, and then just sheet the building, usually in steel, and it's done. Well, it's been almost a full day, but we've got all the trusses up. Just doing a little bit of bracing at this point, just in case the wind picks up overnight, but it's been a great day. Hardly any wind at all. Trusses went up fairly smoothly. Brian, how did they go up? Give us a thumbs up there. Well done. They went up really well. Great group of volunteers helping out. <laughs> Thanks very much, everybody. 
smile. <laughs> well, once the trusses are installed, then it's just a matter of straightening them and plumbing them and then strapping them so that they can receive the metal sheathing of the roof. Well, the footprint of this building is 32 feet by 56 feet. That's 10 meters by 17 meters. Well, at this point, the building is more or less finished as far as the framing is concerned. There's a couple of little details left, but she's ready to start putting the steel on. And it only took maybe about two, two and a half weeks to get to this point from the very beginning. First measurement, 25 and 3 quarters. 25, 3 quarters. 50. 5, 0. 73 and 7 eighths. 73, 7 eighths. 97 and 5 eighths. 97, 5 eighths. 121 and 7 eighths. 121 and 7 eighths. Now with the roof on, we can proceed with sheathing in the walls. This, as you can see, goes very, very quickly. Once the walls and the roof are sheathed, then it's time to call for some concrete. And in this case, Brian opted to hire some professional concrete finishers. And uh, these fellas came in, they did a great job, and they did it very, very quickly. So now you know the whole story behind this massive boat shed for such a small boat as Wave Rover Hull Number 1. Well, in the past week, I've had numerous requests for plans and for kits for the Wave Rover. And both Andy Dyes, my naval architect, and myself are absolutely floored by this interest. And may I say, also a little caught off guard. You see, we're simply unable to produce retail plans that quickly. In fact, it'll be difficult, but we're going to try to produce those plans in time for Christmas this year. The reason is that Wave Rover Hull No. 1 is still being developed. Although the hull shape has been established along with numerous other dimensions, Andy, the naval architect, still needs more time to develop the structural components as in addition to numerous other details. The truth is, we could put the plans out earlier, but they would lack building details that could lead the backyard builder into solving unneeded complexities. And trust me, there are enough challenges when it comes to building a boat. Now a good and complete set of plans will be worth the wait. Also, we want to take the time so that I can check the placement and spacing of structural members and other details, including the development of an efficient building process. And I'll be doing that right here on Sailing Wave Rover. 
So you'll be able to see me work through a lot of details right here on the channel and then hopefully by Christmas you can purchase a set of plans and give yourself the gift of building a wave rover. Now a boat about the size of hull number one will take somewhere around 500 to 1000 hours to make. That's, that's an estimate I've come up with and that's depending on your skill level and the amount of detail you want to put into it. Now that still leaves everyone plenty of time to build and sail their wave rover hulls in my Joshua Challenge. And the Joshua Challenge is what I spoke about last week. It, it's going to take place the summer of 2023 and we'll be traveling in our little wave rover hulls as a small flotilla from Halifax, Nova Scotia to the Port of Horta in the Azores. And this is going to be just a marvelous opportunity to make an ocean voyage in a small boat. But just as important as that, you'll be making some great friends and some great well, memories. Hello, Rovers. <laughs> That's Mr. Spackles. Now, one of the best ways that you can help the channel, and it doesn't cost you a penny, is by sharing our content on your social media. And by that, I mean, you know, sailing groups that you may be part of, or friends or relatives, anybody who might find the content interesting, <laughs> please share a link to the channel. It makes a big difference to me. Well, Rovers, I'd like to thank the following three people. Bernard <laughs> Zerth, Romer DeVos, and Ray Holahan. The three of those people have made a huge difference for Wave Rover in that they have made the $100 US donation <laughs> on PayPal. And as a result, their names will be going on the Benefactor's Bulkhead, which will be inside the new Wave Rover. And those names will be coming with me on the circumnavigation. I'd also like to give just a huge thanks to our new patrons. Richard Walkington, Paul Finn, Russ King, Bernard Zerth, Sid Allen, and David. Thank you so much. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank everybody who went online to purchase my Mark III wind vane plans. Now, there are links for all of this, a Patron, PayPal, and a Mark III wind vane, all in the video description. Check it out. Now, in the next episode, I'll be having a conversation with Andy Dyes, who's the naval architect, and he'll be answering your questions. So I'd like all of you to write in on the video comments here your questions or concerns or things that you're interested about in the new set of drawings, and Andy will be able to answer those for you, hopefully. So until next week, thanks for watching.